I've learned that real storms don't dictate who you are. They define. Look at somebody say, don't you get this thing twisted. Don't, don't get it twisted. I ain't praising them because of where I am. I'm praising them because where I'm going is better than where I am. This is PowerCast with PC. Well, good morning, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We say good morning uh, to each and every one of you. And as you guys come in, would you uh, please consider sharing this video or tagging <clears throat> someone um, whom you have invited to come and uh, share with us this morning? We say good morning to you. Those of you who are on our conference call, we say good morning, and we are excited about this morning. We believe that today will be a prosperous day, a productive day, a good day, and we even declare in our faith that by the time that we're done today, we'll go from a good day to a great day. We're believing for God's best and blessed for you this morning, and while you guys are coming in, uh, just a quick reminder to join us. Uh, if you have it on clhines.org, clhines.org, uh, <clears throat> and fill out that partnership form that gives us uh, the ability and opportunity to be able to connect with one another. Uh, you can share with us uh, your email address and your phone number, and that gives us the ability to text you special things and special links and so forth and so on. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, First Lady, good morning uh, to those of you who are on Periscope, <clears throat> and good morning to those of you who are on Facebook, and uh, we are excited about this morning. We've had a good day on yesterday, and uh, looking forward to having an even better day today. We're still in the beginning of the week, so we've got time to turn that thing around, and also, I want to encourage you that if you have any questions, especially questions dealing with what we shared about uh, in our Monday Momentum, want to get those questions in, you can text us your questions or you can email us your questions because when we do our pop-up this week, we want to deal with some Q&A. And so we are excited about that uh, really quickly uh, before we jump right in. Would you take a moment and share this video, share this video, share this video. All right. This morning, <clears throat> we're going to be sharing from the book of James, chapter three and verse 17. And I want you to consider that. Uh, the kingdom of God is within all of us. We know that the kingdom of God is the ability of God, the power of God, the strength of God. And consequently, that means that as long as the kingdom of God is within us, then there is absolutely nothing that we can't do. I want you to consider that you being a part of the kingdom of God, you believe that when you call on the kingdom of God, uh, that the kingdom will operate in your favor. Same thing with me. I have to believe that being a part of the kingdom of God has benefits. But I want you to consider today that because we are, <clears throat> because we are a part of the kingdom of God, that God wants us to participate in his doing in the earth or in his activity in the earth or in his uh, performance in the earth. Consider that. God wants us to be a part of his performance in the earth. He wants to do some things uh, in the earth. People need to be healed. People uh, need miracles. People need uh, all types of things, and he wants us to be a part of it. When somebody is praying for a job, he wants us to be able to have the hiring power that he can tell us, I want you to hire one, two, three, and we go to the one, two, three. Good morning. We go to the one, two, three and say, you know what? I want to hire you. And now all of a sudden we are an answer to someone's prayer. What I'm suggesting to you is that God has a cause in the earth and his cause is a righteous cause. And when we connect to that righteous cause, there are certain things that God will do for us 
just because of our connection to that cause. And so I want to encourage you today to get connected to the righteous cause, get connected to uh, the cause of God in the earth. If God leads you to pray for somebody, pray for them. If God leads you to sow into somebody's life, sow. If God leads you to just call and encourage someone, encourage them. If God, uh, whatever he leads you to do, know that your obedience is critical because we are a part of the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is a resource to those who are in the kingdom. The kingdom of God is a resource to those who are in the kingdom. Well, watch what James chapter 3, verse 16 says. It says, for wherever there is jealousy and self-ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. And so now we see that there's two things that cannot be in our hearts in order for us to be a part of the kingdom, in order for us to operate in the kingdom. Because the purpose of the kingdom is to take care of the people in the kingdom, to further the cause of God in the earth. And we've got all these Bible says, behold, I give you keys to the kingdom. We can bind stuff on earth and it be bound in heaven. We can lose stuff on earth and it be loosed in heaven. He told us that the kingdom of God is a seed kingdom that we can sow seeds. He told us that the kingdom of God is within. Good morning. He told us that the kingdom of God is within and so. We've got all of these instructions and all these things that we know that gives us the ability to be in the kingdom and maintain the kingdom. He even told us when we pray that, that thy kingdom come and thy will be done. And so we understand the kingdom is a real thing. Watch this. And there are people who need the kingdom of God to show up for them today. There are people who who need the kingdom of God to show up for them today. Somebody's prayer, the answer is in us, but we can't answer it. We can't be connected to the righteous cause if there is jealousy. So you got to get rid of jealousy. You got to get over jealousy. If God blesses somebody else, stop looking at what God does for somebody else and, and, and feel like uh, it's not your turn or, or God, why did you do it for them and not for me? Learn how to be genuinely happy for people when they are blessed. Learn how to be genuinely happy and joyful and excited about when God moves someone else's life further or what you perceive to be a little bit further than you. Number one, I've learned that everything that looks like gold isn't gold. And so sometimes we find ourselves jealous of something that isn't even real. We're jealous of a picture and not a reality. But number two, God will oftentimes show us somebody who has what we would want or, or, or is going where we would want just to check the parameters of our heart. Now, God doesn't check our heart because he needs to know. He checks our heart because we need to know. I'm going to say that again. God doesn't check our heart because he needs to know. He checks our heart because we need to know. And I want you to take a few moments today and just kind of ask yourself a look with some introspection. You know, what are the areas in my life where I may be jealous? I might be jealous of another family, jealous of another job, jealous of money, jealous of, of a car, jealous of a whatever. Make sure you want to check that because if that thing is in your heart, it is contaminating your ability to function with God's righteous cause. Another big problem is not just jealousy, but self-ambition. Self-ambition is one thing to want to be successful, and it's, an, and it's one thing to want to have nice things, and all of that is cool, but the real question is why? Why? What is the cause of you being prosperous? What is the cause of you having more than enough? We know God wants us to have more than enough, but he also wants us to have more than enough the right way. And if you don't check those causes, those intentions in your heart, then you'll find yourself trying to get kingdom results in your labor or in your work or in your uh, idea of how to make it happen. That's why some some people are, are, are struggling right now because they were, were they were in a position where they were working several jobs and trying to do several things, trying to make something happen when we don't have to do that. Bible teaches us that he'll gives us he'll give us the desires of our heart. So if he's going to give me the desires of my heart, then I got to learn how to please him. I got to learn how to be in faith. He said without faith it is impossible to please the Lord. So I got to learn how to have the balance that I do the natural things 
that are necessary, but I also stay in the supernatural, which is my faith. So I got to check my selfish ambition. I got to make sure that the things that I am genuinely doing in my life do not just bless me, but they bless someone else. Are you in a position where your life is a blessing to someone else? Because I've discovered that God will bless you, keep you, give you grace, maintain you when you have the responsibility of helping to bless and maintain others. Can God trust you uh, with increase today? Can he trust you uh, with healing today? Or are you going to go right back uh, to the things that you did before? My prayer for us today is that we understand the significance, but most importantly, the responsibility of being in the kingdom of God and that when we are in the kingdom of God, that there is a job for us to keep order. The Bible says that everything that God does, he does in decency and he does it in order. So let's be a part of the order of the kingdom. Why? Because in James chapter three, verse 16, he says, not only uh, for wherever there is jealousy and ambition, he says, but it's there that you will dis- you will find disorder and evil of every kind. So the very nature of our self-ambition, the very nature of us just doing something just to do it can produce evil. So let's be purposeful. Let's be intentional today about everything that we do. Let's ask God for his guidance. Let's ask him for his leading and strength to be patient strength to be patient. You know, our selfish ambition can get us in trouble. It can produce a lot, but it also can produce a lot of mess and a lot of foolishness with what it produces. And so I want to encourage you today that when you move forward today, you're moving forward as a part of the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you that all that you have done pales in comparison to all that you are about to do. You said in your word that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. And so, so, Father, we thank you and we pray today with great expectation, expecting you to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you could, all that we could ask or think. And Father, we just de- decree and declare your word today. We pray your word over our homes. We pray your word over our hearts. We pray your word over our minds. We pray your word over our relationships, our children, our marriages. Father, we cover our lives in your word today. Let your word be a light unto our feet, a lamp unto our feet, and a light unto our path, Father. Father, we pray that your word will empower us to be salt today. We pray that your word will strengthen us in patience today. You told us that they that wait upon the Lord, you would renew our strength. Well, we need strength today. Some of us have been in the house so so long until we just want to get out and we just want to go back to our normal lives, Father. But give us strength today to wait. Give us strength today to wait, Father. Give us uh, wisdom, supernatural wisdom that precedes the wisdom of this world, but wisdom that gives us divine understanding and insight to know what to do and when to do it and how to do it. Father, I thank you today because I believe that we are in a Job chapter 8 and verse 7. I believe with all my heart, Father, that we are in a season where it's going to start little, but it's going to end with much. And so, Father, to those who are in their beginnings, those who are initiating new things and beginning new things and working towards new ideas and dreams and goals and visions, even those who may be in the infancy of believing you for healing or deliverance in their bodies or in their minds, Father, I thank you for the grace to start. There may be some who are still working towards forgiving other people or letting things go. Father, I thank you for the grace to start. I want you to cover us in your grace as we are in a fresh beginning, a new beginning, a new day. And Father, we pray for all leaders today. We pray for our president. We pray for world leaders, prime ministers all over the world, kings. Father, we pray not just for them, but for the Senate and 
all political leaders. Father, we pray that you cover them in wisdom, that you would cover them in strength. Father, we pray for all civic leaders. We pray for leaders on the local level. We pray for leaders on the national level, and we pray for those on the international level. Father, we pray for the CEOs of some of these huge companies that employ tens of thousands of people. Father, give them wisdom. Give them a heart of compassion for those who have to work in these companies, Father, they, that they will make sure that they are creating environments that are not just conducive for work, but that they are environments that are conducive for the health of those who work. And Father, I pray for pastors today. I pray for all pastors today that you would Give us wisdom and insight, empathy, compassion, and understanding. Give us divine insight on what to do and how to do it. Father, we pray for our country that you would bring healing to our land, not just physical healing from a sickness, Father, but healing from these diseases in this country like racism and some of these other things that have kept us divided and to give us this mentality that one set of people is better than the other. When you told us in your word that you are no respecter of persons, Father, we pray, God, that you honor your word today. So we declare your word today. And Father, I thank you that you are covering us in your grace, that you are covering us in your mercy. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of the kingdom. And we want to do our part today. We want to carry your power. We want to carry your glory. We want to carry your anointing. We want to carry your insight and your wisdom and your understanding so that we can be the answer to someone's prayer today. And Father, we give you all of the glory. We give you all of the honor. Thank you for always being faithful. Thank you for being more than enough. Father, if you never do anything else, you've already done enough. And we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, we love you. We're praying for you. We're believing for God's best for you. I pray that the rest of your day is the best of your day. And I pray that your day has gone from good to great. I want you to do something today intentional. If you didn't get a chance uh, to uh, look at our Monday uh, momentum, you can go back and watch that. Uh, we are talking about Job chapter 8, verse 7, and doing what God has called us to do. I believe that we are in a season of Job chapter 8 and verse 7. It's going to start little, but it's going to end big. Don't forget, even with all that is going on, God's word has not changed about us. We're praying for you. Remember, to live better, love God, and serve people. We're praying for you, and we'll see you next time.